development projects through public-private partnerships to stimulate the, the regulatory framework for public-private partnerships to repeal the previous Act of 2013 and for connected purposes. It, it is distinct from the public-private public procurement and asset disposal act, uh, which of course does deal with procurement of goods and services in a normal way. Why I'm saying that, Honorable Chair, is for us to get understanding how private players, what we are calling proponents, come into the picture. Uh, Honorable Chair, uh, Section 40 of the Act, I'm now talking to Just you. Just on, on a quick point of order. And this is my good friend. You told me that you have to leave at 12. If you are taking us down memory lane to tell us how this came about, are we going to go to the specifics? I want to request you, because you are a politician like me, to go straight to answering the questions. Leave the history to us. We are lawmakers. We draft the legislations. And we are conversant with it. My good friend, go straight to answering each of the specific questions so we don't lose. Thank you, Honorable Chair. I was actually just laying a foundation, but I can, I'm well guided if that's the position of the committee. So going back to the question raised by Honorable Mungatana, and I agree with him, the Kenya Association of Manufacturers have voiced concerns about electricity availability and affordability. A concern that has been raised by many other people, including Houses of Parliament, Honorable Chair. And it is true that as a result of those concerns, that the Ministry of Energy and Petroleum did come up with what we are calling least cost power uh, development plan, which is in sync with the transmission master plan by Kitrako. Those two documents, when read, looked at together, will give you a roadmap as to how we intend to electrify the whole country by the year 2035, that was mentioned by my good friend, Honorable Ledama. Honorable Chair, when we say by this particular year, we don't mean that particular year. It can be much earlier than that particular year. But let me say this, Honorable Chair. For us to be able to implement these ambitious projects that are captured under the transmission master plan by Kitrak, we will need a whopping 650 billion Kenya shillings, Honorable Chair. Money that for all intents and purposes we do not have as a country. We do not have it from our normal taxes and we cannot borrow it in the normal manner given our current situation in terms of debt. And that is the reason that informs our resorting to the PPP framework, Honorable Chair. Honorable Chair, in that master plan, we have got projects lined up across the country. And as a matter of fact, as we speak, because we didn't have to put all this, all this in this document, we are only referring to projects which are being under which have, been, which have been proposed by Adani Energy Solutions. But if you allow me, I can point out very quickly existing projects in coast region. We have got the Ma, Ma, Rabai, Malindi, Garsen, Lamu line. Okay? We have also ongoing Garsen, Hola, Bura, Garissa. And at procurement stage, we have got to Mariakani, Dongokundu. Okay? And also planned, we have got Dongokundu, Shimoni. Details can be found. But Honorable Speak, Honorable Chair, to summarize, is that no part of the country will be left out in the fullness of time, Honorable, Honorable Chair. On the issue of the Adani indictment, as raised by my good friend, Honorable Mungatana. You, you did not mention, sir. <laughs> and precisely, precisely. If I was to mention every part of the country, it would take the whole day. Yes, you are part where you come from. And we... we have got to plans, and Ketrako can confirm, 
to construct a, a high voltage transmission line from Kisumu, Bondo, Siaya, Rangala, Busia, and Mianga under PPP, Honorable Chair. But he, to go back to my other issue, my other issue. So on the issue of the Adani Western, <laughs> Western, we exactly under the under the Africa 50. Africa 50. We have got the Kisumu, Kakamega, Musaga. Yeah. yeah, very big line plus substations yeah. along the way, Honorable Chair. On the matter of Adani indictment, <laughs> Honorable Chair, under Section 41 of the PPP Act, we have got to very elaborate mechanism for undertaking for undertaking due diligence. And I want to go to the point straight away. And pass on to this section, Honorable Chair. The PPP Directorate, which is domiciled at the National Treasury, in coordination with the Ketraco, conducted due diligence exercise on the proponent, that is Adani Energy Solutions, in two phases. Phase one, of course, uh, uh, involved documentary review, that's what we call desktop review, of all soft copies of the documents that the proponent provided to demonstrate their technical, legal, financial, and logistical capacity to undertake similar projects. The proponent, that is Adani Energy Solutions, also provided documents demonstrating their legal standing, compliance to laws and regulations including tax compliance in their country of origin, which is India. This particular phase of due diligence was during the evaluation of the PIP and it extended to the later stages. But at phase two, Honorable Chair, the due diligence was conducted by a team of <coughs> eight officers, all members of the evaluation committee, from Ketraku, the directorate, okay, who traveled to the proponent's country of origin for the purpose of verifying details provided by the proponent during phase one of the due diligence. Okay? What am I saying in short? Is that at the end of the day, after those two phases of due diligence, the contracting authority, that is Kotrak, was of the view that the proponent passed the test was of the very considered view that the proponent passed the test following those two phases of due diligence as provided for under section 41 of the PVP Act. We had no knowledge of any other adverse matters that would have, would have come to light, maybe now or some months or weeks earlier. And therefore, we are proceeding on the basis of the outcome of the very rigorous due diligence exercise that was undertaken by the contracting authority in line with the law. So, the question is, would these emerging reports in any way affect the delivery of this project? We can't tell. Why? Because they aren't related to this project. We can't, we can't even vote for their veracity from where we sit. And therefore we'll be engaging in speculation, Honorable Chair. The second limb of that question is, could these bribery or corruption claims have a bearing on our own process? To my knowledge, Honorable Chair, there has been no 
case of corruption or bribery in so far as this PIP of Adani Energy Solutions is concerned, up to now, up to this very moment. On the questions by Honorable Ledama, as I've said again, I, I, we, didn't in, we didn't intend to, communi to, to, pass to, to communicate that Wajia Mandela at Uganda will be uh, sorted out in 2035. No, that was not our communication. But let me say this. There's this notion that uh, Africa 50 or the Consortium of Africa 50 and other possible proponents are cheaper than any energy solutions. Honorable Chair, if you were to, uh, take to, to propagate such an argument, you'd be comparing oranges with, uh, I think, mangoes. Because the two are not comparable. The, the, these, these proponents' proposals are not comparable. Why? Because they are proposing, they are giving proposals in line with Section 40 of the Act based on their preferred projects. They are looking at the landscape and coming to us with proposals in Passover to Section 41 and telling us, hey, here we are. We want to, you to allow us to undertake these particular projects. And then we evaluate if that proposal, or if those proposals and those, propo pro and those projects are conform to the requirements of the provisions of the Act. And once we are satisfied, then we proceed to engage them in negotiations. Honorable Chair. So, Adani Energy Solutions made proposals in respect to four projects which I have highlighted in the, in the report. Africa 50 and the, cons and the consortium similarly did make proposals on other projects. In fact, two projects. Yes, on two projects, two other projects, separate projects, different lengths of transmission lines, different uh, number of uh, substations, differ different uh, terrains, and so on and so forth. So, it is premature to say, as we speak, that Africa 50 and its consortium, or any other proponent for that matter, are cheaper than any energy solutions. Because in any event, for Africa 50 and its consortium, we are simply at the negotiation stage. We are yet to get to the project agreement, or to commercial closer. For Adani, we have been able to go to the commercial closer. And that's why we executed the project agreement on the 9th of, what, of September. Project agreement, not commercial. Project agreement, yes. Yeah. So, so that basically answers the second limb of the question, and indeed the last limb of the question by Honorable Adama. If you allow me, uh, uh, you can add one minute and then uh, motive one minute, just to sum up. Honorable Chair and Honorable Members, I... Uh, our CS has clearly enumerated some of the issues. I just want to uh, answer Senator Mukandana in uh, very brief remarks. Number one, uh, in your own county, we have a project which is among the projects that uh, our CS did mention that I'll be traveling to China to unlock. One, we have a stall project between uh, Garrison, Bura, Hora to Garissa. If we complete that project, uh, Honorable Senator, then the Mombasa ring will be complete. Why? Because you'll now be able to get power from Kembere, which are the hydros, through uh, Hola, Bura, to Garsen, and all the way back to Rabai. Now, from Rabai, you get power uh, from uh, Giordamo, through Susua, Olkaria, Susua, Isinya, all the way to Mariakani, Rabai, then uh, to the coast region. So that is one project that we are very keen in completing. Number two, and very important, is completing, which is a line that is under construction, 220 kV line between Rabai, we are doing a new line, between Rabai uh, through Bamburi to Kilifi uh, and then when His Excellency the President uh, travelled to Korea, on his first visit to Korea, he negotiated for a loan that is going to help us uh, do three critical transmission lines. Number one is complete the route between Narok and Bomet. Then, less, uh, then Kabarnet to Rumuruti, and most important is Marindi, Weru to Kilifi. 
you realize that you have a, 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 a plant in uh, Weru that is a global plant. So we need to complete that thing. So it is not true that we are not prioritizing costs. We are pro prioritizing costs and we don't, do know the need that investors are having in the coastal region. And let me mention that KPLC is at the tail end of uh, completing a very critical substation at Bomani. That will help us stabilize power around that region because that region is becoming a serious load center, second uh, to Nairobi. Number two, uh, Senator uh, Ledama, who is my very good friend, did mention uh, the price and uh, Waziri has, has enumerated. But let me reiterate the point that Waziri is making. That here, Adani are doing four uh, projects. Let me speak about the Gilgil -Gil Dika Mala Konza. If you look at the land acquisition cost, it's a 400 kV line. If you look at the land acquisition cost on that line alone, you cannot compare the land acquisition cost of that line and compare it with Lesos to Lesuk. Lesuk is somewhere in Samburu. We want to do that line between Lesos and Lesuk. The land acquisition cost, the terrain are totally different. And so, therefore, the impact on the tariff cannot be the same. If you look at Rongai, uh, Chemosit, uh, Keringe to Chemosit, again, a totally different uh, terrain. Why are we doing this, these lines? Number one, and the Kenyans need to understand, realize that between 1978 to around 2008, we never invested in the transmission network of this country. We have since grown our capacity from 1,000 megawatts to 3,300 with no alternative evacuation routes of power. Let me say that we had a nationwide blackout around 25th of August this year. And one of the reasons why we had that blackout is because power from Olkaria, power from Lake Trukana, and power from uh, uh, <laughs> Ethiopia does not have any other evacuation route other than from Suswa to Isinya to Mariakani and from Isinya to Embakasi. We want to complete the Nairobi ring such that we have an entire a line in line out in Malawa, such that now that power from Suswa can go through Malawa, to, uh, through Gilgil, to Dika, Mala, Konza, and complete the Nairobi ring. I can tell Kenyans that if we had that link, and we had that problem we had in Suswa, we would not have had a national blackout because power would have had an alternative evacuation route. Let me speak about the issue of Marosabet and Isiolo because we want to connect them to the, uh, to the grid. That link, we had a contract that is between Loyangalani to Marosabet, Marosabet to Isiolo, which was tied with the Dika Malakonza uh, ring. But we have not been able to pay the counterpart funding complete. But if we discope this uh, Dika Mala Konza, then we can be able to do the line between Longaran, Masabit, and Masabit to Isiolo and connect those uh, towns to the grid. We have since written to Ethiopia Power to help us connect Mandera, and that means if Ethiopia Power gives us uh, what we need, we shall be able to connect Mandera the same way Moyale gets power from, uh, from, from Ethiopia. Uh, Moesimu Aledama, you did mention about Lodua. Lodua, we are connecting by uh, April 2026 because we have already procured a contractor. Contractor is on the ground doing a line uh, from Lokitang all the way to Lokitar all the way to Lodua at a cost of 900 million shillings. So Lodua again will be sorted and will be connected to the grid. Lastly, is be between Garissa and Wajia. We have seen submitted a feasibility study to connect Wajia to the grid. And once we, uh, National Treasury approves, we seek for financing so that we connect Wajia to the grid. Thank you, Chair Submit. Uh, thank you very much. I, uh, I think before you go to supplementary questions, let's agree that time is really running very, very fast. Yeah, and indeed, I thought that this uh, engagement needed a little bit more time. Uh, this one. So, just uh, clarification. I don't know you whether we allow you to ask a supplementary question. Go, we go, but please make it very brief. To yes, yes. That's what. That's exactly what but we want to do. A quick one, because I think it's important. Just a clarification. Waziri, did you say that a team of Ketrako contacted due diligence on Adani? Because I think by practice, it's supposed to be conducted by an independent agency. <laughs> that is issue number one that I want you to clarify. Number two. You alluded to Section 41 of the PPP Act. And if you read it carefully, it bars parties that have been engaged 
or are charged with corruption. Now, this issue of Adani being indicted, doesn't that raise concerns about the company's ethical practices? Because you've said here categorically that regardless of what you're coming, what you are getting to know, you will continue, regardless of any other company raising concerns about their ethical practices, you will continue with the practice. And then finally, you still have not answered. Why are we taking power to where power is and leaving out Wajia County, leaving out Mandera County? Those two questions you've not answered. Uh, I think, I think uh, on that sure, one, maybe. Uh, uh, I think I got the answer to that. Uh, because other members also want to participate, before you even get to, answer, uh, to ask you a supplementary question, because I think this session is not going to be enough. So let's have... Uh, let, let's, let's, uh, and it's connected. Mr. Mgatana, Senator Mgatana. Let's allow Senator Sifuna to go, Senator Karuare to go, and then, uh, and then um, uh, the Vice Chair... If we still feel that we've not exhausted this, I think we can still engage because I think the answers that I got, because maybe I'm more technical, so I'm listening. I think the question of when the power is to be connected, I think I've gotten the answer to that. But uh, let's, uh, Senator Sifuna go and then Senator Karware. I have a feeling that time is running very fast. And I thought what the peers explained, this is something that we needed to have interacted earlier on, this in information that we needed to have earlier on, and this explains why we need to have another session longer, whereby we need to explain to Kenyans what is being planned by when. So, Senator Sifuna, and then Sir Harwale, Senator uh, Mugatana, I'll still give you a chance to uh, ask your supplementary question, but Waziri and the PS and the um, uh, CEO, please hold it brief, kind of an executive summary, if we are not able to cover it, then we can still engage at another date. So let us phone up. Uh, Chair, unlike you, I'm not a technical.